this is it. The video long time coming. The long term review on the shift findings and I'm going to be completely honest with you. Ready? Let's go. Oh, Dukes. It's deep. Just to let you know, I'm not sponsored and this is a complete honest review that I want to share with you my story about these bindings. Uh, my name is Floss. For the people that don't know me already, I'm an international ski teacher, mountain leader here in the Tarentaise Valley in France. And I've been teaching and leading for over 28 winters now. And uh, this is my co-pilot Dookie Dog. So about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I was here exactly in the same place outside Le Plane, my home in the French Alps. And uh, I was talking to you with regards to the Salomon and Shift binding. You can see the video, I'll link it down below. Today, I want to talk to you about the Shift binding, the Atomic and Salomon Shift binding. I want to tell you how to use it and how to overcome any difficulties that you may have when using it. And I was giving some tips of how to use it and the difficulties using this binding. Into uphill mode. Number one, you flick down here. Now today I want to share you my story with this binding two and a half, three years on and uh, I have kind of a mixed opinion on it. So it was going really well and uh, until one day in the winter of 22 stroke 23 and uh, I was ski touring at the back of Teen uh, with my best mountain bestie Rich and uh, we had an adventure and it was one of those days where I'd completely messed up and I forgot my SD card. Well, um, forgot the SD card. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everybody and today we want to share some raw footage with you. This is my mountain bestie Rich and so I couldn't film so I had to use his phone and we were ski touring three to four hours outside the back and I took these bindings. Now everything was really good. Hell yeah. That why we come to the back country. Water. Here she is, Mrs. Mop to Mrs. Pans. <laughs> so here we are at the Refuge de Plaisance. So you've got to get the water and warm it up so then it uses less gas. That's what you got to do. It is. So we've just arrived, grateful to find that it does have a winter room. In the winter room, it's even got an indoor toilet, which I'm very grateful for. We've got gas, we've got wood. Now I took these bindings and I left them outside, um, which is a normal thing in the refuges. You can't actually bring the skis in. So I left these bindings outside and in the morning when we got to pack up, I couldn't believe it. It was an absolute nightmare. So this toe piece basically had frozen and uh, because it had frozen, it didn't release. So it didn't allow us to go up the hill. I had a set of skis that didn't work. Now, me and Rich tried everything. We put hot water on, we sorted, you know, got a knife, pen knife, we cleared the snow and it was still so frozen. We had to change our route and we went down this mountain and we crossed some waterfalls. It was a complete absolute nightmare. We then got to the bottom of the valley. We had to literally hike out for hours and hours, get to the smallest village. And when we got to the smallest village, we managed to get the bus and then a lift system to go back into Borg Saint Maurice and eventually a bus back into Teen in the evening. Now to overcome this problem that I had with this binding, I phoned up a friend of mine who works for Salomon and he sent me these windows which I actually changed in the front of the binding. Now ever since I've changed the windows in the front of the binding, the binding has worked really well. But unfortunately, my confidence for any really backcountry day tours or anything like that with these bindings have completely gone. Now, don't be a lurker and stay in the background 
comment below tell me your stories that you have with this binding let me know how you're getting on with them and if you have any questions just pop them down below however there are a lot of my clients and friends who use this binding and they've had great successes all round And you know what? For me, it's actually a really good binding. I think a binding that you can have the advantage of going uphill and downhill, but in the safe mode. The, you know, the binding that actually releases in the fore and after, and it gives you a good alpine performance on the way down. It's actually perfect for my clients. Do you know what? It's only just me doing absolutely everything here, filming, editing, you know, uploading, and it really helps the channel. If you like these videos, just press that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another video. So thank you for that. Now, another difficulty that I have had with this binding is that in different snow conditions, the brake actually stays up. Um, it actually gets blocked and frozen and I haven't really been able to solve that. Um, some of my clients have actually had problems with that and you just have to sort of get rid of the snow and in warmer temperatures, the brake actually comes down. It's not a massive one. It's just if you do fall over and the brake is actually up, then it's gonna have some difficulty and the ski will actually fly off. So my overall conclusion on this binding is generally, I actually really like this binding, despite my difficulty I had in the refuge. And I still use it, my clients still use it. I actually think it's a perfect binding in resort and, and it allows you to actually tour a small distance around so you can actually find that fresh powder or away from the crowds a bit but I will not use it for big mountain days. I just don't have the confidence and the trust anymore. From me and Dookie Boy, we just want to say thank you so much for watching and uh, have an amazing season. This is looking fantastic. For the 11th of November, 2023, the snow is just amazing. So we'll see you in the next one. Boom. What do you think, Dukes? I mean, it was the first video. We can always do it again. They're really precise like any other alpine binding. <laughs> <laughs>